that's what I like to see. A friendly face in the midst of uh, the desert, looming like an oasis to me. <laughs> I don't think I've ever called an oasis before. Probably never looked like one before. Must be the dress. I think it's the face. <laughs> what you drinking? Uh, lighter fluid. Yeah, sounds great. I'll have one too. Bartender, I'd like one of whatever she's got going there. Hey. Listen, how would you feel about two old friends getting together for a dance? I would love to dance with you. You would? Mm-hmm. Well, all right. Why don't we just leave your drink here to ferment a little bit, and let's get out there and show those kids how it's done, all right, honey? Okay. Let's go. <laughs> Is this okay for you? I suppose we could have some people to move, couldn't we? You can do that if you want. It's perfect. Oh, well, let's get out there. All right. Well, Dr. Oh. Jeff and little sister. Broker oh, Spencer. Oh, I don't want to face anywhere. Why don't we ask them to join us? All right. Uh, do you, hey, Jeff, do you guys want to join us? When you finish your dance, of course. Uh, yeah, why not? Come on. Good. Let's go. I'll get the drinks. Oh, I'm getting old. <laughs> the best idea I've heard all day. We got our own little party going. Yeah, sure. well, look, here's the terrific idea. That was Jennifer's idea. Good one. Too. Oh, Jennifer, I heard about your father being appointed to the board at the hospital. Yes, he is. He considers it quite an honor. He was so proud when he told me. That's amazing with uh, as many things as your father's got going that he'd be so impressed with something that small. There are so many new businesses, I don't even know how many there are. I think that's why he asked the Baldwin Law Firm to represent him. Yeah, well, speaking from experience, I know that that's the trouble with money. When you have so much, you have to surround yourself with people who take care of it for you. <laughs> I understand that you're Laura's uncle, too. Yeah, yeah, she's my favorite niece. Of course, she's my only niece, but what are you going to do in short notice? <laughs> I was sorry to hear about what happened in the park that night. Yeah, we all were. It's pretty terrible. Yeah. It must be a dreadful thing for a girl to try to get over. Well, it's tough, but it's not impossible. She'll be okay. She's got Scotty to help her through it, and he's one of the most understanding people in the world. What are you doing sitting here all by yourself? Well, Bobby, I had my law review class, and Laura's over at her mother's house, and I did not feel like going back to an empty apartment. Is Laura spending the night with her mother? No, no, she'll be home in a little while. You know, she's coming back to work here at the disco. Yes, the look told me. Scotty, how are you? I don't know, Bobby. I don't know how I am. I, I've got a few problems of my own right now. Well, you know me well enough to confide in me. Or I know you well enough not to confide in me. Oh, come on. I've changed. I know. I'm sorry. I know you have. It's it's really no big secret, Bobby. It's, it's me. Me, you know? I mean, I talk about being objective and being able to handle the truth about the rape. Well, the truth of the matter is, Bobby, I don't think that I could handle it all that well. Because I still have periods of depression and anger, hostility. I still want to kill that animal that raped my wife. But there is nothing, but nothing that I can do about it. Excuse me. Desperate need of a ginger ale. And I'm in desperate need of a new dance part. Vivarine hasn't been in here asking for me, has he? Ah, uh, no, but if he comes in, I'll be sure and let him know that you're here. Oh, well, some friend you turned out to be. Well, look, us girls have to stick together, and I'm with Claudia. If you're going to be such a party pooper, we're just going to have to get somebody else to go with her to Las Vegas. Well, what are you going to do? Just stand there, or are we going to go back to dance? Well, I think we'll sit this one out. <laughs> Make that two ginger ale. <laughs> Hey, man. Scotty. What's up? 
I should ask you the same thing. I didn't know you were going to stop by tonight. Hey, hey Scotty. How you doing, man? Why don't you come over here and join us? Uh, okay. In one second, okay? All right, all right. Is something wrong? Uh, no, nothing's wrong. It's just that, you see, I got a call earlier this evening from Lieutenant Stein. What now? Listen, it's, it's just routine. I've heard that one before, Stein. We just want to ask you a few more questions about Johnny Calder's death. Tonight? Uh, yeah, maybe he's got a lead, connections, and then his connections or something like that. Scotty, I hope that, you know, once I identified him as the man who raped me, that it would be over with and I could forget about it. I know, I know, but he just wants to talk to you. I think he should. Laura, Scotty. Oh, hello, Good to see you. Smith. <laughs> Keeping tabs on a beautiful wife? Oh, yes, sir, that I am. Glad I ran into two, the two of you. Jennifer's going to meet me here later, and I was hoping that both of you could join me. Uh, um, no, no, I'm afraid that we're not going to be able to do that tonight. Oh, are you sure? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, sir, it's almost impossible. See, i got to run Laura down to police headquarters tonight. Police headquarters? Yeah, well, they want to ask her a few more questions about the death of Johnny Colby. My usual, Laura. Right away. We're alternating with uh, Barry tonight, but after that, we're, there'll be different shifts. Hi, Laura. Laura, this is Jake. Uh, he's going to be working with Barry tonight. This is Laura Baldwin, my number one girl around here. Hi. Luke, uh, did you know that Mr. Smith is here? No. Oh, excuse me, I have to say hello to someone. I think that maybe we should talk first, right? Uh, by the bar? Yeah, sure. Uh, let me uh, check you in behind the bar, Jake. You won't have any trouble tonight. It's a good start. But watch out for these two. They party hardy. That's right. Very honest. Oh, thanks. Anything else? Just one thing. A smile from you. I, I didn't realize that I wasn't smiling. Is it because you have to go down to police headquarters again? Mr. Smith, I don't have anything else to tell them. I mean, I'm not going to tell them anything else, Mr. Smith. You don't have to assure me of that. I have every confidence in you. You do? I thought that was understood. I've learned what a smart, loyal girl you are. Yes, I am. I'm just sorry that the police keep dragging you down to headquarters. It must be a terrible nuisance. Well, uh, can't be avoided, I guess. <laughs> Uh, if you'll excuse me, I have a couple more orders to fill. Oh, go ahead. I don't want to interfere with your work. Kids, only certain customers are allowed to run tabs, so if anybody wants to do that, be sure you check with Jerry or one of the girls first. If you have any trouble, I'm here, okay? Hi. Um, would you do me a favor? I ordered uh, two cognacs from, uh, from Barry. I didn't get them yet. Could you... What's up? Uh, well, I, I thought that we were going to have a problem, but I guess now we're not. <laughs> do you want to run that by me again? I have to go to police headquarters tonight. What? Lieutenant Stoddard? Yes, one and the same. He called Scotty and he asked me to go down there tonight after work. And uh, it's something about Johnny Colby. Colby? Yeah. Uh, Laura, I'm sorry. It's okay. It doesn't bother me that much. I was just afraid that it was going to bother Mr. Smith. Scotty told him. What? What did he say? Well, when I delivered his drink, he said that he was sorry, and he hoped that I knew that uh, he trusts me completely. He didn't seem concerned? Not a bit. You mean he, you didn't feel that uh, he thought maybe you could link Colby to the organization? Well, if he thought that, no one would ever know. Why? Don't you believe that? Listen, it's hard to know what to believe about Smith, but I'll tell you one thing I do know. We can't afford to have him decide he doesn't trust you.
Well, sir, if Laura's being harassed by the police, it certainly doesn't show. She's a remarkable girl. Yes, she is. I think Jennifer's a little jealous of her. Jealous? Why would she be jealous of Laura? Well, you know women, Luke. I think it's because Laura's such a striking blonde and so many men pay attention to her. And Jennifer is a gorgeous brunette. Who doesn't like competition where her love life is concerned? She shouldn't consider Laura competition. Really? That is unless, of course, Jennifer is secretly in love with Scotty Baldwin, which I doubt. <laughs> As you can see, Laura is very much in love with her husband. He's the only man she'll ever love. I think you really do know the girl, Luke. Yes, sir, I do. I really do. Anything to turn yourself on. And make sure you get that information from me. Turning myself on has absolutely nothing to do with it. Joni's a friend. I think he's breaking up with Ann Logan. Let's dance. There are marbles. Oh, well, wait a minute. I gotta check with the bartender about something. This is supposed to be your night off. Judy calls my key Hi, Scotty. Laura, I'll just buy the drinks. Oh, Luke. He always does that. Luke about the girls' uniforms. You know, they're kind of upset about the way they're being cleaned. Mm, okay. Well, listen, okay. I'm going to let everybody know that we're here. They're probably wondering where we were. Okay. See you in a little while. All right. Luke. Yeah, what did you tell Scotty? Well, I just told him that the girls are upset uh, about the way the uniforms are being cleaned. Um, tell me, what did Mr. Smith say to you? Have you talked to him since you drove me home from the police station? No, and that may be a good sign because he didn't try to contact me. Well, then maybe he's convinced that I'm not going to tell the truth about Johnny Colby. Look, I think the only thing that he's concerned about right now is that the police know Colby used to be an employee of his at the warehouses. Okay, but there are a lot of employees who aren't connected to the organization. With Laura, Smith put out a contract on Colby. Now, if Colby knew that and told somebody he was running scared, that person could take that information to Lieutenant Stoddard. Well, I'm not going to worry. I'm not, because Mr. Smith knows that I handled things well with the lieutenant. Yes, you did, so just hang loose. Maybe you're off the way. And so, I mean, we're really hoping that Jeremy is going to take a turn for the better tonight. Listen, did, did anybody ever find out how the accident happened? Uh, well, because of the rain and the roads were really slick. Hi again. Oh, Do you mind if I join you while no, we're talking shop? Oh, come on, baby. Look, why don't, you, why don't we just make a party out of it? Why don't you say, look, come over here and join us, huh? Yeah, why not, Jay? Yeah, oh, that sounds what are you doing? Later. Running out on okay. me here? <laughs> no, I say you ran out on me. Oh, we were just talking business. Yeah. Well, Luke, they've asked us to join them this evening. Join yeah. us. Well, all right. <laughs> and I hate to invite you and run, but this one has been pestering me to dance. Yeah, I hate to <laughs> Come on. All right, if they're dancing, come on, Beverly, might as well show them off. Well, I hate to do this to everyone, but talent must out. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we'll be playing musical chairs this evening. Right, yeah. The music stops, we'll switch, huh? <laughs> well, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, so listen, um, we're gonna have a party at the apartment, uh, maybe if you want to come along. But we have everything that we need, Luca. Oh, okay, Luca, we'd love to come along, but I'm gonna bring the booze. No, no, you don't have to do that. Scotty, listen, listen you need to save your money. Come on, I'm gonna... dance. Come on. Okay, continue this. Your enthusiasm is overwhelming. <laughs> well, I was just thinking that your roommate probably won't be home. You're probably right. He'll be at the hospital. Keep a look at Jeremy. Does that bother you that he's not going to be home? No, it doesn't bother me. Maybe it should. Why, Inspector Kelly, whatever you mean. Listen, Luke, by the way, is this a good idea? Oh, yeah. Listen, in. that's got to stop. I, I work Scotty, in a place. Listen, man, he doesn't pay for it. He just takes it off the shelf. Oh, oh sure, that doesn't cost him a thing. What's money anyway? Well, I've got to know. stop. Let me do that. I'm an old hand at it. Okay. Thank you, Luke. I'm going to get some napkins. Oh, okay. thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Laura, what are you doing? <laughs> oh. I don't know. I, that was crazy, wasn't it? Yeah, well, I guess it got to be a habit, didn't it? Fear becomes a habit after a while. Well, look, I want you to forget about what I said earlier. Don't worry about it. Luke, how could Johnny Colby know that he was in trouble? Isn't Mr. Smith too smart for that? Colby knew that he should have never been seen watching your apartment. Now, I don't know if we told anybody about that or not, so let's just forget it. Well, he, he's dead now, and I'm, I'm just going to forget that uh, Johnny Colby ever existed. Good. Let's hope everybody else does too. How about some wine? Yeah. Well, that music spells romance time. I selected it. I hope nobody minds. Nice. No, Jennifer, it's lovely. Very romantic. I feel romantic. Hey, you feel like going home? Who's home? Hers or yours, Brian? <laughs> I'm sorry. Brian, just think of how romantic it's going to be when we all get to Las Vegas. Oh, I can hardly wait. <laughs> you know, I'm getting real close to finding out about my bar exam. Yeah? Wouldn't it be terrific if I found out before we went to Las Vegas? Then it would be like a double celebration, huh? <laughs> what makes you think you're going to want to celebrate? Oh, 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 o